From childhood's hour, I have not been as others were. I have not seen as others saw. I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source I have not taken my sorrow, I could not awaken my heart to joy at the same tone, and all I loved, I loved alone. Then, in my childhood, in the dawn of the most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill the mystery which binds me still. From the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form, and the rest of heaven was blue, of a demon in my view. That was Alone by Edgar Allan Poe. I'm Jess Faulkner, and this is Just Jess. The title of today's episode is Bipolar Disorder and Tea Sandwiches. So let me give you a medical update. I went to my hematologist and my platelet count has gone up. So I'm back on three hydroxyureas a day. And we are talking about switching to Jacophy. Jacophy is another chemotherapy medication. Uh, tomorrow I'll be getting a scan of my spleen to check how enlarged it is. So that'll be fun. A uh, life update. The tea sandwiches were great. There was some doubt about them, being that they were going to be for a large group of black people, but I got the thumbs up. Feeling pretty confident about my tea sandwich game. Podcast update. We have subscribers. Thank you for listening, everybody. I really appreciate you all. This podcast, I find, has been very therapeutic for me, talking through my chemotherapy and just talking through some of the issues that I that I experience on a day-to-day basis. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I think that's all the updates I have. Let's get into it. Today's episode contains material that might be difficult to discuss. Content warning. We're about to explore themes of suicide, which some people may find distressing. Bipolar disorder. What is it? What are the symptoms? How do you live with bipolar disorder? What are the treatments for bipolar disorder? There are a lot of questions. I get asked a lot of questions about my bipolar disorder. And most of the time when people talk to me about it, they think that it means that one time I'm really angry and then suddenly I'm really happy or I'm really happy and then suddenly I'm really sad. But it just doesn't work that way. Here's what the Mayo Clinic says about bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder, formerly called manic depression, is a mental health condition that causes extreme mood swings that include emotional highs, called mania or hypomania, and lows, called depression. When you become depressed, you may feel sad or hopeless and lose interest or pleasure in most activities. When your mood shifts to mania or hypomania, which is a less extreme version of mania, you may feel euphoric, full of energy, or unusually irritable. These mood swings can affect sleep, energy, activity, judgment, behavior, and the ability to think clearly. Episodes of mood swings may occur rarely or multiple times a year. While most people will experience some emotional symptoms between episodes, some may not experience any. Although bipolar disorder is a lifetime condition, you can manage your mood swings and other symptoms by following a treatment plan. In most cases, bipolar disorder is treated with medications and psychological counseling. I just want to take a few minutes and touch on some of that information I just read and tell you how it applies to me. So I do have extreme mood swings. I call them, I call them mania uh, when I'm in mania or sometimes hypomania. And I call my down, I call my lows downs because I feel down. It says you can feel sad or hopeless and lose interest or pleasure in most activities. Let me tell you, when it says you may feel sad or hopeless, It means you don't want to get out of bed because you don't see the point in living life. 
losing interest or pleasure in most activities like breathing <laughs> like breathing like walking like like having to get up and even go to the bathroom you don't want to do anything i'll be very honest i'll be very honest there have been times when i was very unhealthy in my 20s when i was in a depression and I would be in the closet with a gun in my mouth. I was in an abusive relationship. I didn't have a support system. I was in therapy, but was just having a hard time trying to get the right medication. And I was, I was just, ter I was just in a terrible place. I was just in a terrible place. I'd go into my closet and I would just cry. And thankfully, I never hurt myself. Um, you know, I'm still here to tell the story, but things could have gone much differently, you know, and I'm really thankful that they didn't. Now, I should say that I'm definitely not in that same place anymore. I'm very mentally healthy as I have found medication that works for me and I am in talk therapy. Um, and I'm in a, a very healthy relationship. There's no abuse. I'm in a safe home. Um, I'm in a good place now. So I feel like it's a good place, a good time for me to talk about that. If you or someone you know is thinking about suicide, please call 988. You can connect with people you trust there. Continuing on, Manias or hypomanias are shifts in your energy when you feel euphoric or have a lot of energy or you feel like you're on top of the world. It comes with moodiness, though. You feel irritable. Um, manias have been some of the best and worst times in my life. You do feel like a million bucks, but it comes with overwhelming anxiety and the feeling that you're trying to crawl out of your own skin. It's not a pleasant feeling. You're very aware that something is wrong inside of your body and that something is happening that it should not, that should not be happening, but you can't do anything about it. When I'm manic, I stutter because I can't talk as fast as my brain is processing what I'm thinking. I get very irritable and I recognize it, but I can't do anything about it. I am very creative. I have a lot of creative energy, but it comes with irritation and that feeling that something is wrong inside of me, like that I'm trying to come out of my own skin. It's very uncomfortable. Um, I can't move fast enough. I can't talk fast enough. I can't, I can't express myself well. Um, but I'm unrealistically happy and in this stage where I feel like I have epiphanies and I have these great ideas and sometimes they are sometimes they are wonderful ideas sometimes I create the best art the best food when I'm manic because that's when I have that creative flow um in a way that I must do something I must be creative but at the same time, it, it's very uncomfortable because if I don't satisfy that part inside of me, it, it feels like I'm clawing at my insides. Now, I have something called rapid cycling bipolar disorder because another common misconception about bipolar disorder is that you switch in between your moods very quickly. One minute you're fine, and the next second you're 
you're manic or one minute you're manic and then the next you're in a depression and then a few moments later you're back into a mania and people don't cycle that way most people don't cycle that way most people cycle a few times a year or numerous times a year it really depends on the person i'm a rapid cycler so i cycle now since i'm medicated well, I guess it's kind of hard to say because I'm medicated. I rarely feel my cycles anymore. Now, I rarely feel my cycles anymore. Sometimes I'll notice that I'm in a down suddenly when I'm reading something specific that I usually read in downs or I'm listening to a specific song that I usually listen to when I'm in a down and it's making me feel that type of way. Just like when I recognize I'm in mania, sometimes it's so slight that it's hard for me to recognize. Now, occasionally I'll have stronger swings. I'll have, I, I'll have mania instead of hypomania, and I'll be in a pretty good down for a few days. My swings only last for a few days usually. I think the longest one I've had recently was about a week-long mania, and it was miserable. It was miserable. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. It was absolutely miserable. I couldn't sleep. I had all this energy, but my body was exhausted. Um, my judgment went out the door. You know, I just, I just, my decision making is faulty, <laughs> to say the least, to say the least. I do want to tell you a story about when I was younger in my 20s. See, I'm diagnosed bipolar type 2 in my 30s. I was diagnosed at 19 with bipolar type 1. And it wasn't till I was in my, oh, I guess almost in my 30s, that they changed my diagnosis to bipolar type 2, which my doctor said can happen with a changing of a specific age. Um, he always told me that by the time I was 25, my brain would settle down and it would just be easier to live life. Many people don't know this about me, but I was married before. I was married in my 20s, my early 20s, and it was a terrible marriage. For the sake of privacy, we'll call my ex-husband Richard. Or maybe Dick for short. Dick was that typical, overly masculine, to make up for daddy issues kind of guy. He had a lot of anger issues, a lot of drinking issues, and couldn't stay faithful to save his life. So he tells me one time when we're having a fight, he says, <laughs> and it's funny now. I mean, it was, it wasn't, it's not funny, but it's kind of funny. He says, I wish you would have get cancer instead of being bipolar. That way you'd either be healed or you would die. <laughs> something, something pretty close to that. Like he'd rather I get cancer that way I could either feel better and like go into remission or I would die from it and it would be easier for him to go through than for me to have bipolar disorder. Now I can't say how hard it is to be married to somebody with bipolar disorder. All I can say is how hard it is to have bipolar disorder and it's very difficult and a lot of our marriages end in divorce. A lot of our lives end in suicide. We just don't farewell out in this world because being bipolar, you don't live a steady life. You don't stay on one path. I try to explain it to my husband like this. Everybody's on a path, right? And the way forward is the way you want to go. You just want to go straight on life's path, right? Sometimes there are twists and turns. Sometimes you take steps back. When you're bipolar, you're taking steps forward, just like everybody else 
in life. But then you go into a mania and you take a sidestep. Because just something, there's just something that's a little different now after this mania. Or you go into a really bad low, a really bad down, and you take a sidestep. Lots of sidesteps when you're bipolar, instead of moving forward, you just kind of shift. You just kind of shift positions sometimes, and you could feel like a whole new person. I have these, I call them mini deaths. I've called them mini deaths for probably 15 years, where I am a version of myself, go through a mania or a down, and then I'm a different person. Something has changed within me. Hey, <laughs> sorry, wicked reference. Something has changed within me. Something is not the same. I'm done. I do take this very seriously, by the way. It's just my coping mechanism to break up um, hostile feelings with laughter usually based on self-deprecation. Okay, let's talk about some of the symptoms of bipolar disorder. There are several types of bipolar and related disorders. They may include mania or hypomania and depression. Symptoms can cause unpredictable changes in mood and behavior, resulting in significant distress and difficulty in life. Amen, sister. Bipolar 1 disorder. That's what I had when I was in my 20s. You've had at least one manic episode that may be preceded or followed by hypomanic or major depressive episodes. In some cases, mania may trigger a break from reality, which is called psychosis. Bipolar 2 disorder, which is what I am now. You've had at least one major depressive episode and at least one hypomanic episode, but you've never had a manic episode. Bipolar 2 is not a milder form of bipolar 1 disorder, but a separate diagnosis. While the manic episodes of bipolar 1 disorder can be severe and dangerous, individuals with bipolar 2 disorder can be depressed for longer periods, which can cause significant impairments. Although bipolar disorder can occur at any age, typically it's diagnosed the teenage years or early 20s. Symptoms can vary from person to person, and symptoms may vary over time. This is true. So let's talk a little bit about mania and hypomania. Mania and hypomania are two distinct types of episodes, but they have the same symptoms. Mania is more severe than hypomania and causes more noticeable problems at work, school, and social activities, as well as relationships difficulties. Mania may also trigger a break from reality called psychosis and require hospitalization. Both a manic and a hypomanic episode include three or more of these symptoms. Abnormally upbeat, jumpy, or wired. Increased activity, energy, or agitation. Exaggerated sense of well-being and self-confidence, or euphoria. Decreased need for sleep. Unusual talkativeness. Racing thoughts. Distractibility. Poor decision-making, for example, going on buying sprees, taking sexual risks, or making foolish investments. I want to talk about this for a minute. Some of these are, examples are very much so what I have experienced myself being in a mania. In my 20s, in my, especially in my early 20s, before I was medicated and before I started seeing a talk doctor on a regular basis, I was very out of control. I was a jerk, to be honest. I really was. I was not a good person. I was not a good person. I had all this hurt from all this trauma of my childhood and was cycling through mania and depressions, not, not knowing enough about bipolar disorder to really help myself yet, still being young and just kind of brushing it off and not caring too much about my mental health. I, manias were 
very difficult and very dangerous. I used drugs when I was manic. I had unprotected sex when I was manic. I've driven drunk while I was manic. I've made really bad decisions during mania because of my lack of ability to control myself. And there have been times that I have have been in psychosis where I, gosh, where I believed that I was special beyond what was normal, what was real. I felt like I was famous. I felt like I was famous in the small town that I was in. And that life for me was kind of different. And it was way outside of reality, but my manias were just so out of control then. It was very hard to experience that. It was very hard to experience. And it made it very difficult to keep a job or be in a healthy relationship or have friends um, because I would just make bad decisions. I moved in with a couple friends of mine um, and then immediately caused problems (laughs) and then moved out and broke my lease. I just was a very irresponsible, disrespectful person. I really didn't care about anybody but myself. And during my manias, that was pretty exaggerated. Now that I have fully embarrassed myself, let's talk about downs or major depressive episodes. A major depressive episode includes symptoms that are severe enough to cause noticeable difficulty in day-to-day activities such as work, school, social activities, or relationships. An episode includes five or more of these symptoms. Depressed moods such as feeling sad, empty, hopeless, or tearful. Marked loss of interest or feeling no pleasure in all or almost all activities. Significant weight loss when not dieting, weight gain, or decrease or increase in appetite. Either insomnia or sleeping too much. Either restlessness or slowed behavior fatigue or loss of energy, feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt, decreased ability to think or concentrate, or indecisiveness, thinking about, planning, or attempting suicide. I was 16 when I tried to kill myself. I used pills that were available and I took everything that I could get my hands on because I was going to go back to a shelter. I was going to go back to not having a family or a home and I just couldn't do it again. So I made the decision to end my life because I just couldn't I couldn't keep going on with life how it was. I was hospitalized um, in a psychiatric unit for a while until they felt that I was safe enough to go home. It was needed. Obviously, it was definitely needed. I know I was really mad at the time when I was a kid. Because, you know, one, my attempt did not work. And I, I was very upset about it. And two, I was now in a hospital with police around me having to go to this strange place, having to go to a psychiatric hospital miles away from where I lived. You know, it wasn't a good time for me. And... I feel like I spent a lot of time 
in my teenage years and downs because of my situations, because of the abusive situations I was living in or the situations with my significant other at the time that I was in, the homelessness that I experienced as a teenager, just everything I think contributed to me having more depressive episodes and going deeper into those depressive episodes than maybe what I should have. Let's talk about some other features of bipolar disorder. Signs and symptoms of bipolar 1 and bipolar 2 disorder may include other features such as anxious distress, melancholy, psychosis, or others. The timing of symptoms may include diagnostic labels such as mixed or rapid cycling, which is what I am. In addition, bipolar symptoms may occur during pregnancy or change with How do you know when to see a doctor? Despite the mood extremes, people with bipolar disorder often don't recognize how much their emotional instability disrupts their lives and the lives of their loved ones and don't get treatment they need. And if you're like some people with bipolar disorder, you may enjoy the feeling of euphoria and cycles of being more productive. I know I do sometimes. Sometimes when I'm just kind of in a rut, I think, man, if only, if only I was panic right now. Um, however, this euphoria is always followed by an emotional crash that can leave you depressed, worn out, and perhaps in financial, legal, or relationship trouble. If you have any symptoms of depression or mania, see your doctor or mental health professional. Bipolar disorder doesn't get better on its own. Getting treatment from a mental health professional with experience in bipolar disorder can help you get your symptoms under control. Now, of course, I need to mention suicidal thoughts and behaviors are common among people with bipolar disorder. If you are having thoughts of hurting yourself, call 911 or your local emergency number immediately. Go to an emergency room or confide in a trusted friend or relative or contact a suicide hotline. In the United States, call or text 988 to reach the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, which is available 24 hours a day, every day of the week. If you have a loved one who is in danger of suicide or has made a suicide attempt, Make sure someone stays with that person. Call 911 or your local emergency number immediately. Or if you think you can do so safely, take them to an emergency room. I'll tell you firsthand, I've had to go to the emergency room because of emotional distress. I was low on medications and I wasn't able to get a refill. I needed a refill. It was an emergency And somebody had just tried to stab my brother to death. And it was a lot for me. And I was not processing it very well. So I went to the emergency room and told them. Now I was put on a safety hold. I did have to go to the psychiatric unit in the hospital. But it was what I needed. And I used the time to really heal myself and to get away from the situation the best I could, and it helped. It helped greatly. I was also able to get the medication I needed. Now, the causes of bipolar disorder are unknown, but several factors may be involved, such as biological differences. People with bipolar disorder appear to have physical changes in their brain. The significance of these changes is still uncertain, but may eventually help pinpoint causes. Or genetics. Bipolar disorder is more common in people who have a first-degree relative, such as a sibling or parent, with the condition. Researchers are trying to find genes that may be involved in causing bipolar disorder. So I believe genetics is what is caused my condition. My father is also diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, honestly, I think it's something that has brought us closer 
as father and daughter, just as and two people just in general, because I watched him all through the 90s and 2000s. I watched him struggle. I watched him go through manias and depressions before we even knew it was bipolar disorder. And I know he self-medicated often with alcohol, as I did before I knew it was bipolar disorder. Um, and even after I knew it was bipolar disorder, I still self-medicated with alcohol for the longest time before I got healthy and started, you know, taking my medication and doing talk therapy. There are risk factors with bipolar disorder, such as having a first degree relative, such as a parent or sibling with bipolar disorder, periods of high stress, such as the death of a loved one or other traumatic events, or drug or alcohol use. Um, these can act as a trigger for the first episode. If left untreated, bipolar disorder can result in serious problems that affect every area of your life, such as problems related to drug and alcohol use, suicide or suicide attempts, legal or financial problems, damaged relationships, poor work or school performance. You could have bipolar disorder, but you may also have another health condition that needs to be treated along with bipolar disorder. Some conditions can worsen bipolar disorder symptoms or make treatment less successful, like anxiety disorders, eating disorders, ADHD, drug or alcohol problems, and physical health problems such as heart disease, thyroid problems, headaches, or obesity. Now, there's no sure way to prevent bipolar disorder. However, Getting treatment at the earliest sign of a mental health disorder can help prevent bipolar disorder or other mental health conditions from worsening. If you've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, some strategies can help prevent minor symptoms from becoming full-blown episodes of mania or depression. Mostly, avoid drugs or alcohol. Drinking and using drugs can worsen your symptoms and make them more likely to come back. Pay attention to the warning signs. Addressing symptoms early on can prevent episodes from getting worse. You may have identified a pattern to your bipolar episodes and what triggers them. Call your doctor if you're feeling that you're falling into an episode of depression or mania. Involve family members or friends in watching for warning signs. I know... I know for me, I definitely watch out for warning signs that I'm headed towards a mania or a down, and then I have a plan in place to kind of counteract those feelings. So that's what I do. Um, you should also take your medication exactly as directed. You may be tempted to stop treatment, but don't. I've done that before where I've got to the point where I'm just like, I am tired of being on all these drugs. I just want to be myself again. And I've stopped taking my medication and it was an absolute nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Stopping your medication or reducing your dose on your own may cause withdrawal effects of your symptoms and they may worsen or return. So... Please don't play doctor. Don't mess with your own medication. I know somebody who does that. I'm not going to name any names. I know somebody who thinks that they should adjust their own medications based on how they're feeling. And it never works out for them. And it just is so hard to watch and see. So please don't adjust your medication. Take your medication as directed by your doctor. I have so many stories I could tell you about being in a mania or being in a depression. Just really horrible things and really good things. Um, you know, it's, I'll say it's not all bad. It's not all bad. It, you can live with bipolar disorder. You can live a full life with bipolar disorder. I've got two children. 
Um, and I'm very happily married. My husband is very supportive of my bipolar disorder. He makes room for me to feel all the things I need to feel at the times I'm feeling them. He offers me a safe space to be in, to create in. Um, he knows not to let me go anywhere by myself. <laughs> he knows not to let me go anywhere by myself if I'm manic. Um, and he's always there if I'm in a down. He's always there for me when I'm in a down and just having a really rough time. So it really helps to have a good support system, you know, as part of your life. Have a good support system. It it just makes all the difference. And if you don't have a good support system and you are bipolar and you need a friend, look, you can reach out to me. There are multiple ways to reach out to me. So um, reach out. If you don't have anybody to reach out to, reach out to me and we'll be friends. I could always use some more friends. So let's be friends. Now, I'm currently being treated for bipolar disorder with a variety of medications. I'm on Wellbutrin, Abilify, Fluvoxamine, and Boost Bar, all to treat my mental health issues. So those are all the mental health issue medications I take. Um, if we have something in common, let me know. Hey, we can be Boo Spar twinsies. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to me talk for a while about bipolar disorder. I hope you learned something. Um, I hope this encourages you to go to the doctor and find out, you know, what's been going on with you. If you've been feeling some type of way, you know, go to a doctor. Go find out what's, go find out what's going on with you, girl. You deserve that, okay? You deserve to be treated and to take the best care of yourself that you can. Moving on from bipolar disorder, let's jump into tea sandwiches. <laughs> I've got to do a better job at transitioning between between segments of the show. Um, so the tea sandwiches I made uh, the other day were absolutely delicious. I made them for uh, another party one time and they were the hit of the party, of course. They are absolutely delicious. They're light. They're wonderful. Let me give you the recipe for these tea sandwiches. So there are three different tea sandwiches that I made. It's pretty easy, guys. You have the filling and the bread. And those are the two most important parts, okay? For the bread, you're going to use white Wonder Bread. Now, for the cucumber tea sandwiches, you're going to thinly slice with a mandolin, not a knife, because you can't cut it thin enough. Thinly slice with a mandolin your cucumber. Then put it on one side of your bread. Take Philadelphia chive and onion cream cheese and generously coat the other side of the bread. Chop up some dill and sprinkle it in your cream cheese and put together your sandwich. So it should be bread, cucumber, dill, chive and onion cream cheese, bread. For your tomato sandwiches, you're going to use tomatoes on the vine. Those are great tomatoes to use. You can also use Romas. Those are sweet and delicious. You're going to mandolin those as well. Thinly slice them. And then you're going to layer them like you did the cucumber sandwiches. It's going to be bread, thinly sliced tomato, chive and onion cream cheese. But you're going to salt and pepper these. And then put the white bread on. For the last one, it's a dessert sandwich. And we're going to make it with cherry preserves and cheesecake spread. And we're going to spread that on both sides and make a sandwich with it with the white Wonder Bread. After you make them, you're going to cut the crusts off of them and then cut them diagonally so they're nice, cute little triangles. Then you're going to put them on a tray and you're going to wrap them really well with some cling wrap. 
you're going to wrap them with some cling wrap. And you want to make sure no air gets in, okay? You want them to stay nice and moist. And you can serve them the next day. They're really delicious. They have a ton of flavor. They end up being very soft sandwiches with just a little bit of a crisp in the middle. Um, I get asked to make them all the time because they are just super cute, tasty little noshy noshes. So there's the recipe for those for you. Could you use regular cream cheese? Sure you could, but it's not going to have the same flavor. You're not going to have the same depth of flavor as you are with the onion and chive cream cheese by Philadelphia. Okay, play with it. Use the garlic cream cheese. You know, play with it. Make it your own, but just use some flavored cream cheese. Don't, don't be bland. Let's not be bland, people. Well, I hope today's episode was informative. I know people have a lot of common misconceptions about bipolar disorder, and I really hope I cleared some of those up. Living with bipolar disorder is very difficult. You know, if you know somebody who's suffering with bipolar disorder, just be there. Just be there for them. That's really what we crave so much, is somebody to be there, just show up at their door, if you know they're in a down spot because they're never going to call you and ask you for help never just the feelings of guilt are unreal you know it's hard for us to to ask for help so just be there that'd be cool i'd appreciate it and again if uh, anybody ever needs to talk please send me an email get a hold of me some way i'm all over social media you can easily find me but you're not you're not alone Nobody's alone out there, guys. You don't have to be alone, okay? I am always here if somebody needs something, if somebody needs to talk, if somebody is just really, gosh, if somebody's just really in a tight spot and needs somebody to talk to, I am here for you. You don't have to go through things alone. I can help you find resources that you need for mental health because taking care of your mental health is taking care of yourself. You can't take care of yourself without taking care of your mental health. It's your wealth. Your mental health is your wealth, girl. Don't you know that? And to all you kings and queens and non-binary peeps out there who are holding it down and making sure that your mental health is your priority. Way to go. Good job, okay? I see you. I see you putting in the work, putting in that work in yourself, okay? Healing yourself, doing what you can to break the cycle. Way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for putting that work into yourself, okay? The world is a better place because of it. All right, everybody, that's it for me today. Thanks for listening to my information on bipolar disorder, and I hope you enjoy those recipes for those tea sandwiches. They're super tasty. Enjoy them. And in case nobody's told you today, let me be the first to tell you, that you are appreciated the work that you do is appreciated okay and I know it's hard because no one's recognizing it no one's recognizing those little things that you do but I see you okay I see you putting in the work and and working hard to make a difference that nobody sees but everybody appreciates Okay, you just keep being the most fabulous you that you can. Keep putting in the hard work and life will be beautiful for you. I hope life is beautiful for you today. Go slay your day. Slay day.